Dear friends, dear colleagues, welcome back to the Mangano Digital Academy and to the essential of digital dentistry. In this short lecture, we'll talk about digital condylography, a really cool opportunity that we have to add more data when we catch, when we collect the 3D data of our patient. Let's go back to the digital dentistry workflow. Uh, in the scanning phase, we can acquire a series of important information from our patient by means of uh, combine computer tomography to get the bone anatomy and some radiological information in 3D but also we can use structural light to get information about teeth, soft tissues through intraoral scanner and the face with face scanner and we have another tool that we would like to talk about and in this, in this video we'll focus on, on, on this tool, the digital condylography. So after we have collected the whole set of data from our patient, it goes from real to virtual and it's possible inside the software to make our planning. After the planning being made, we can go through the production of uh, objects several kinds of objects, can be bridges, can be crowns, can be surgical guides, can be uh, orthodontic retainer, whatever it is, whatever it takes, uh, we have to uh, consider that we go from virtual to real and we use milling unit, we use 3D printer, we use selective laser sinter and selective laser melting technologies to make objects we use in the clinical field, so we clinical apply what we have produced. So this is the workflow. And if we talk about digital condylography, uh, we need to consider that it's a really valuable tool. We have, uh, of course, uh, inserted this tool into our workflow in our uh, little practice on the Lake of Como, and we love it, definitely. We use mainly this tool for two reasons, for two purposes. In, first, in Prosto, when we make, uh, when we plan um, uh, complex restoration bridges from three elements to up to five, six, seven element full arches, of course we use this tool because we capture this uh, information of the movement of the mandible and we send this information to the dental technician in order to can proceed with modeling in a dynamic modeling inside Exocat. So it's something more from the functional point of view um, is not working anymore only in a static occlusion, but it works in a dynamic occlusion and it is the real articulator, the patient itself. Uh, but uh, this is not the only application. We have also a second application. We have a set of patients, a pool of patients suffering, unfortunately, from um, temporomandibular joint disorder. It's quite, I mean, uh, frequent in, in this time. And so they need help and they need a pre-therapy with a bite. And it's very useful to use this tool for planning the best possible bite for that specific purpose, for that specific patient. So let's go through a case, a very easy case. This patient was a young female with temporomandibular joint disorder with a, I mean, uh, hyperactive um, um, musculatory function. Uh, and uh, suffering from pain and sometimes noises in the temporal mandibular joint bilaterally. So what we wanted to do, we wanted to start with a relaxation bite in order to open the, the bite and see the effect on the muscular activity and it is a sort of pre-therapy then we can go on the therapy if needed when we can modify something, the occlusion in the habit of the patient and whatever it, it needs to improve the situation. But in this case, we start from an intraoral scan in maximum intercuspation with the CS3800 from Kerstin Dental. We capture, of course, everything, uh, all the details possible of the, both the model, the mandible and the maxilla, as we can see here from this uh, polygon format file in color. Uh, it is important to capture the, the bite correctly in maximum intercuspation. Why? Because when we um, move, uh, when we collect the, <clears throat> the information to the digital condylography, we use this device, the Mojo Joint Motion. Uh, then it is very important to, to, to insert inside the software the STL file or the polygon format file, if you want to keep the color like in this case, of the um, intraoral scan of the patient. And it is important that this intraoral scan uh, are taken in a perfect maximum intercuspation for the, as, a, the, as a start for the movement. As you can see here, this is how it works. Basically, there's a um, uh, there's uh, the, the device uh, works like a motion tracking 
and uh, this is how it works uh, we can have a real-time registration of the movement on the patient in this case uh, from the maximum intercus patient where the patient is protruding so it is one of the first movements we register the protrusion and uh, we have all the set of information needed uh, 2d and 3d but the visualization tool is very valid because we can can gives us an idea of the movement in 3d and it is quite important this is the protrusion again as you can see um, the the first movement we, we, we capture is the protrusion, but obviously there's a set of movement we capture. We capture the right lateral protrusion, like in this case, in order to see how the movement is made. And we also capture the left lateral protrusion in order to have all the information about HEL and, and Bennett angle as well, if needed. And uh, obviously the open close, and we can see a deviation here, quite important, uh, and uh, in, in the 2D we can see the movement in the tile within the every single millimeter. Then also another interesting thing is to capture the, 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 the chewing but of the patient. We, if you give to the patient a chewing gum, then you can register this movement and it's quite important. There are several other movement and positions you can register with this machine. What I want to show you is how we proceeded in this case. There's the possibility with this machine to uh, replicate and reproduce the movement frame by frame until uh, you uh, get or you reach uh, the problem in the 2D eventually in the case for example of a noise or a click uh, but uh, in this case the dental technician asked to proceed frame by frame and to find a certain degree of opening of the bite because he wanted to design the, 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 the bite splint exactly at that level of opening then we can save this new position um, with um, the, the, the bite open and we can proceed accordingly. Basically what we do is we have a new position, a new open position, we have decided this position, this position is a real position, the patient can have during the movement and we save it this position and then we can export this open position straight to the computer assisted design software for a dynamic computer assisted design modeling of the bite splint. Before to do that we can, before to, to model the bite to design the bite and to model it dynamically we can replicate all the movements easily and we don't need even to use the, the articulator mode of exocut because here we are talking about xml5 directly exported uh, from mojo and imported inside exocut and then we have the real individual articulator the real movement of the patient is actually there and it's fantastic for the dental technician because the dental technician can use this data for several purposes as i told you in prosto when we have long span restoration we use it for a dynamic modeling of the bridge for example of the long span restoration in this case we use it for the bite for a dynamic modeling of the bite splint and uh, as you can see we can the dental technician can replicate all movement exactly as he wants and through this tool he can also obviously model a bite in a perfect way in this case it's a simple bite but it's something more that we have more something more that the dental technician has to work well so the modeling starts in this case from an individual open position registered with a digital condylography. So it's not a, position that the, the, not a position that we give to the patient, it's a position that the patient have uh, during the movement and it's natural, totally. And here with the dynamic bite splint modeling, frame by frame the dental technician can clearly check and accurately check all the contacts and design the bite accordingly. Uh, and it's uh, a bite that will need zero adjustment when it is delivered to the patient, when it is applied clinically. It's something that is fantastic from, the, from this side. So here the lateral view, right and left view, and uh, here the, the bite itself. Uh, obviously the bite is saved in an STL file and then this STL file needs to be produced. We can mill the bite through a very powerful milling unit like DWX52 uh, by Roland or otherwise we can print it. In this case we decided to print it with this printer, the 350 from uh, uh, softless from uh, Boko with the, um, it's a uh, V2P uh, um, printer uh, that is adapted by by Voco with their material as you can see it is the bite in the middle in, in, in red in this case 
uh, we support it, we print it, it's quite fast, uh, we print in the a, in a same session uh, usually three by splint uh, with this material that we print splint flex comfort that is very nice from the patient perspective it's very comfortable and uh, very nice very polishable and uh, the adaptation is uh, fantastic uh, obviously we need to remove the, the support uh, I mean uh, clean it very well with alcohol then we need to uh, I mean polymerize it and then we can eventually control it in the, in the articulator we, uh, on a 3D printed model but uh, we use it to do that before to have the mojo. With the mojo I have to say we don't use it anymore because, because the bytes are almost perfect when they come from the 3D printer and they can be delivered to the patient directly because the contacts are already there. The contacts are exactly the contact that we wanted to have and the movement allowed by this bite are exactly the movement we wanted to have, the patient to have. So the same exact movement as planned in the computer assisted design software, it's fantastic. And it is what we, we get in the model and we deliver the bite. Very comfortable and small or no adjustment at all because everything is perfect, everything has been planned in advance on that specific individual case, on that specific need thanks to the digital condylography. So digital condylography is a game changer in uh, Prosto because it helps a lot for the dynamic modeling of long span restoration, particularly the implant support restoration. And it is very helpful to avoid complication of mechanical and prosthetic nature in the long term. But it's also very important with patients with temporal mandibular joint disorder or suffering from uh, this, uh, uh, some kind of dysfunction there. And it's very useful for this case uh, for pre-therapies like this very simple bites because we don't need basically to mount it in an analogic articulator because it's not uh, useful at all everything is perfect already from the uh, from the from the printer basically uh, perfect fit adaptation stability no need for any intraoral adjustment this is digital dentistry and uh, this is the the view of the bite after the clinical application and uh, Thank you very much for your kind attention.